Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Paint Party live stream. I'm so glad to have you here in my studio with me on this Monday evening, starting out a brand new week. If you've been here before, you know exactly how this works. It is pretty laid back, so feel free to stick around as long as you'd like. You can participate in the live stream through the comments on where on whichever platform you're watching us on. Feel free to engage, ask questions, make suggestions as we go through this evening. This live stream is an intentional part of my learn to paint process. I started just a few years ago teaching myself to paint and I meet you every evening or every Monday evening typically here in my studio and we paint another painting and we learn what we learn and I bring you along for the journey. So I'm so glad to have you with me this evening. All right, let's jump in. I will switch over my camera here, show you what we're gonna paint and why we're gonna paint it this evening, and we'll get started with the live stream. I guess we're already started with the live stream, but we'll get started with the painting. All right, I wanna say hello to the regulars that are popping in right here at the beginning. So good to have you, Lola. There's a few more people coming in as you come into the room this evening. Again, you can participate in the, in the live stream through the comments wherever you're watching us, so feel free to do so. All right, let's get this set up. I'm gonna move my other camera over to the canvas, but let me show you what we're gonna be doing this evening, talk a little bit about that. These are our reference photos. We're gonna be doing this very simple um, sunset. I've been holding on to this one for a while, but it's so beautiful. I wanted to jump in with that this evening. So we're going to get started. And while I, um, move my camera around we could talk about that i wanted to um i actually postponed this one because i wanted to or i like i said i've been holding on to it for a while because i really wanted to get to a point where i had the skill level that i thought i could do this one justice and i feel like i've had some kind of advancements in my painting, not necessarily um, significant advancements in my actual ability, but some advancements in my ability to control what I want to paint, how I want to paint it, and really understand what I'm painting. So that's kind of why I chose this one. Thanks so much for Lola. This is, it's just kind of a abstract, abstract uh, design. I didn't design it, but uh, it is a, some nice bright turquoise and yellow, good complementary colors there um, on the t-shirt. All right, let's jump in. Let me switch you over to my canvas. Welcome, welcome to those of you who are joining us a bit late this evening, or not late, but those of you who are joining just now, so glad to have you. Oh, let me also put out my, I have kind of a process that I do all of this and I don't always get it all done in the same order and then I don't forget things, but I want to make sure I get it all set. Okay, we'll jump in this evening. You can tell I have primed this panel and I have, oh, my nose is running. Maybe allergies this evening. I have my windows open, but I don't know why it's suddenly, I don't usually have allergic responses to anything, but all of a sudden I notice. so I apologize for the sniffles. All right, let's jump in, and I am going to adjust this. I hope it doesn't bother you all too much, the movement, but I need to kind of adjust my
tripod a little bit. All right. So we will jump in. I'm going to put just a little bit of blue on the palette. We have our browns, our standard raw umber. That'll be our dark underscore. We'll do some lighter colors, some oranges, such in the sky. But let's see what we can do. I don't know exactly what we will do or how we'll do this, but that's kind of part of the point is so that we can so that I can learn as I go. So want to just start out getting some some of the basic composition here out on the palette. So take kind of a broad brush. We'll take probably an inch, inch, I guess it's probably a one inch brush that is, or maybe a three quarter inch brush. I just measured it because I always call it a one inch brush, but it's three quarters inch, but it's still large for this eight by 10. And let's start putting in some of the key points. I'm mixing some yellow with this white. I want to do that bright spot right in the center where the sun is. Let's kind of see. So it falls right in here. So we'll kind of do that. We'll have to do several layers probably, but then I think it's good to, since we're doing that, let's just mix a little of this and do the the sky. We'll kind of put in our skyline. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do, but that's okay. It'll work out. Oh, actually, maybe it will. Right now, we're just focusing on covering this canvas. So and we want to kind of do a an under coat. I'm just mixing a little bit of the a little bit of the red. So that will cover up our grid lines eventually. We just we want a little bit of that. All right. So we'll keep going here. Oh man, I dipped into my blue again. Shoot. It's not what I wanted to do, but that's okay.
Hey there, Olan. Thank you. Thanks for popping in for a few minutes. I do a live stream every week. I started teaching myself to paint a couple of years ago. And so I paint every Monday evening here in the States. I guess it's probably Tuesday morning there, I imagine. Okay, now I think what we're going to do is put in the underpainting for the horizon line and the baseline. So what I'm going to do is mix some brown. I'm so used to having the other blue on my palette. So let's put that out, the ultramarine blue, because I put some... Uh, not cobalt, what is this, thalo blue out, and but we want the ultramarine for our dark. So it's so habituated that I immediately went to the blue, and it's the thalo blue is way too bright a blue. So, all right. I think this is about is pretty accurate with where we want the so we'll coat this all in kind of a dark blue or this dark color and this will help us to then when we go in and put the light the light colors on it all improve Thanks so much. It is Monday evening, so Monday has been a good day so far. Okay. Now, it's so dry, the the air is so dry here that it's, I'm just soaking it up. The last few weeks have been pretty bad with the paint drying so fast. So it just feels like sandpaper when I go across the canvas board, but we'll get it covered. And then once we have it covered, that may make a smoother surface to paint on. Okay. Let's see. We'll let that dry a little bit. Then we'll be able to add some color to it. Now... Let's go in and see if we can add some of this blue. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sneezing. My goodness, I don't know why, that's so weird. Something must be in the air. Okay. Kind of mixing this, see if we can get pr fairly close. I'm doing white and thalo blue, and we'll just put some across here. Let's try to put this in. Again, this will be multiple layers, but we'll do... some
Hey there, Mom. Not a problem. You know how this works. Just come in when you can, right? Okay. We'll put some. The further it is away from the horizon, the more. Saturated it is, so it's more uh, cold purple blue up here. And all right, let's just take a minute. We have our underpainting done now. We'll have to do a couple more coats, but this will give us a good start. All right. This will be fun to try to see if we can get it to work. Okay. I'm going to come back over here. back in and put some color in on top of this so it comes about halfway down this area and then it changes pretty dramatically doesn't it so we'll put some of this red color in drying so quick but that'll give us some initial perception of distance this out here there that helps then you can see more of the entire painting I just have to be careful not to bump it with my arm Start to put in that illusion. Okay, let's 
go back and put another layer on the sky. We need this white, kind of yellow colors. A little bit of yellow. There we go. A little bit of the red. Probably a little bit of the blue. We'll see what we can do. The key is to, okay, I want to not lose my, so this is my sunspot. We'll start to put some of this contrast in. to put all this dark
kind of like the flowers. The more or less we more layers we do, the more stripes we do, the better the outcome, in my opinion. I mean, we'll try, we'll see. We just have to blend all of this in. All right, we're starting to get the illusion we want. So this is good. Means we're moving in the right direction. Just gotta keep working that. I think I'm gonna set that aside and now look at a smaller, more precise brush. We'll see. Um, I want to do another, I think, give this a minute. I'm going to step back, take a look, let it breathe a little bit. Now. I want to say another welcome to I see a few more people popping in. Glad to have you. If you popped in in the last few minutes. Welcome to participate in the comments wherever you're watching us. Okay, I'm going to come back in here, draw in this horizon line, that way we don't lose it. That contrast is going to give us the feeling of the original reference. We want that feeling of awe. Really, what I want people to feel is the feeling that they're they just came around the corner because this looks like a country a scene out in the country to me so they just came out around the bend in the highway or something and there's that beautiful sunset and they just have to Grab a picture, the kind that just makes you want to stop and grab your phone to capture that moment. That's what I want it to feel like. All right. Oh, I went up into the sky there, so we'll have to correct that. bringing this red color down further than it goes and we'll yellow this out eventually because the or the red is really only over on this end but we are the artists so we can emphasize or exaggerate some of these colors if we want 
give it a little more Let that dry a little bit. I think I'll bring the yellow ochre in and mix it with this red so that it has a definite yellow hue, but it's still the same. blend as the other then they want to start some variations in here Halfway down. Make some more yellow. Right above the dividing line. I'm dabbing in here just to give the sense of the the break because as it gets closer then it's more Mix a little of this brown with that. Get a definite darker hue, but it still has the color in it. Let's see if this works. We want to bring then some of this, so we want to use some of this kind of right in here.
Hey there, John. Welcome. I agree. I had to clear my patio furniture today because it was covered in pollen. And we're just starting to get it up here in the mountains because of the uh, evergreens putting on shoots and we have broadleaf as well forests that are starting to bloom because we're just starting to get our spring here. Okay, what I'm trying to do is blend these areas that are further apart or further away with the ones that are closer because we see less detail in the back, like in this middle area, and even less detail in the far area than we do in the front. But it's all the same material material but the light reflects off it differently so that's what I'm trying to create is those distinctions and I'm just trying to play with the tone of the paint to do that I'm trying to figure out that puzzle I've said it before, but so much of painting is figuring out the puzzle. We'll just keep doing layers like this till we get what we want. Again, we're trying to create an illusion. So more of my paint needs to go horizontal in this middle section and then more vertical in the other. We just don't want it so like even that it doesn't look organic. That makes sense. There we go. I think we're getting the, the basic illusion we want. We just need to think, sit back and Appreciate. Take a look. All right. Then we'll go back to the sky and move forward. Again. Although I'm running out of Let's see, what am I running out of? I am running out of space on my palette. I think I want to do one 
more coat of the clouds before I do another before I do detail work there. So let's see if we can do that. Huh. I take the white and we'll bring a little of the yellow in. need to tone it down just a little bit.
I said I was going to hold off to on details in the sky, but I get carried away, so such is life. We learn and we get better. Thank you. We'll get there. Okay. We'll kind of. The key is blending in these shades of cooler colors. This is like a purplish brown, which should blend really well with the yellow. Again, by playing up these variations a little more, we can create a little bit more of a dynamic sunscape. I think I'm going to change out my palette, move it over here just so I have more room to mix paint where it's not on top of other paint. Okay, this is doing what I want it to do, which is exciting. I want 
I just blend all these. This is something I want to work on in the next few months is figuring out how to do these kind of almost um, I call them kind of nostalgic suns scenes where they're just highly impression like they leave an impression not impressionist like but We mix just a little blue with this, then we can create a a good contrast in these upper clouds. Just want them to look wispy. They have to have something to contrast against. So Do y'all remember, those of you that have been here from the beginning, like when I, how much I struggled with clouds and how frustrated I used to get because I couldn't get them to turn out well. Well, you might remember that. Yes, uh, now the balance is then putting some multiple shades of yellow and adding actually a little blue so there's a cooler yellow. And so, yeah, it's a... Uh, It's a, an ongoing kind of process, especially for these wispy clouds that are up there in the atmosphere that just kind of leave a suggestion of
suggestion that they're there. That's what we want. This is so exciting to me because you start to see things fall into place and like learning things I've learned that are like where I'm able to create the effect I want, which is really fun once you can do that. A lot of these are study pieces for, I mean, I'm doing it for like these references, but I really want to do, I, I told you I'm doing my series of paintings from when I was in Europe last year and I've done several of those but I want to also do some um, of here where I live the Black Hills that are more substantial and some like of the canyons around here I really want to do some uh, paintings of the that of that space so I'm wanting to break down some of these so that I can create some of the these sunsets and things out of my imagination once I know the technique and I know the process then I can do that a little more easily now I don't want to overpaint this but I want to
Hey, Natasha. Thank you. I'm glad. Uh, I've had people say that they enjoy watching me. It's relaxing. I've been thinking of you and Gary and sending you my thoughts and, of course, prayers over the last difficult months. I'm so glad to see. I think the last I saw, he was headed out of the hospital. I'm so grateful. I know it's still a struggle every day, but I think of you guys. if I don't want to overpaint this sun I think I'm almost getting to where I want it so that's kind of I don't want to do too much now what I want to do is mix this yellow in, take this out to the edges. So that it feels like it's All right. I think we're getting there, y'all. This makes me happy. I want to mix this little white, diffuse that, get it really purple. some of
I just dropped some a paint hook. All right, we just need to wrap this bad boy up and we're almost there, y'all. I'm really pleased with how this sky is coming out. mixing some burnt umber in here so that we get kind of this peachy pink color because I want to just put some additional variety in here and it's a blend color that really stands out and is pretty overdo it because you don't want to lose your We're just kind of playing with this a little bit. Doing just really light 
putting this peach orange over the top here to give it additional glow. Again, the more contrast we can build up, the more it will. Thank you. The more it will appear to be glowing right off the canvas. So that's the intent. I'll blend in all these hard edges so there's nothing distracting visually. All right. I think that's pretty good. All right, that's it. I'm not going to touch, I don't think, that anymore.
Now we need to put in more of the detail down below and I think we are set. So let me step back again, take a look, take a picture. And in this last 40 minutes or so, see if we can put in the trees, the background, and the and finish this foreground detail to the extent we can. Um, so the first thing I want to do is a little purple to do these hills in the background. Don't want them to stand out too much, so we'll just do a really light little bit of hair. They're right on the horizon. They just Stand out a little bit. Might need a little bit darker. Let's see. There you go. Just stand out a little, little bit. They look a little bit larger than they should, I think, but that's all right. Now we need some more red, brown. I agree. I, um, John, one of the places I would love to plein air paint at some point, I think I will, um, when I, for sure, when I switch over to and start, um, painting with oils because they will stay more, uh, they won't dry as quickly but I really would love to go down to Spearfish Canyon and uh, paint Spearfish Falls at like dusk or dawn. But probably dusk because I am not much of a dawn person. <laughs> I am not a morning person, but I would love to do plain air in Spearfish Canyon along the creek. I need to put together a, a group of people who, of painters who want to do plein air and go out into the canyons and paint together. I think it would be a very cool social thing as well as an arts for the Black Hills thing. I think it would be good for our arts community. There may be groups already that do plain air in the hills group, but I don't know if they are. I don't know if there is one. 
command. We want that very precise horizon line. So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, I think we have a precise enough horizon line. Wonder if I can. Okay, I was messing with the clouds again. I need to stop, I know. Okay, go back to here. Now, I want to put the trees in where they're going to be. So let me figure out where we're going to put them. So let's get a little... Brown and blue is makes our black, so we will, or dark, so we'll mix the blue. We'll get our brown. Let's mix, 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 mix. A little bit of blue, a little bit more blue, maybe. Okay, I think that's what. 
Hey there, HB. Thanks for popping in. Looking forward to seeing you guys in a couple weeks. Okay, now I need all of my guidelines are gone. So I'm going to put a tree here. I'm going to put a tree there. I'm going to put a tree here. And then this little one out here. OK. And I will just, we will just create a tree or the shape of this tree around here. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to. Oh, I'm shocked. She didn't want to hawk hike a couple weeks or a couple years ago but she's older now i am uh she had mentioned she wanted to do the railroad grade trail so yeah we'll have to do that i know grandpa wants to do that too so maybe we can all or the three of us and anybody else who wants to Tell Tyler he should bring his uh, fishing gear and go fish out in Spearfish Canyon. Kind of just on this, I just want to get the shape correct. And then, because I don't want to overpaint it too much, because then you, you lose the, you lose the background and I don't, I don't want to lose that.
Thank you, thank you, my friend. It's, I am uh, really pleased, especially because I'm getting there in less than the time. So now I think, hey there, dream world. I think I need to just go back in with some yellow ochre and reestablish these areas that are at the edge of the foreground. So I'm going to take just a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of brown, just to diffuse it a little bit. Well, we'll see. Let's take this yellow. Peaceful. I agree, Heather. Yes. It's, uh, that's exactly what I want people to feel. I said this earlier, I think before you were on, but I want, when people see this, I want them to feel like they just came around like the corner of the highway and here was this sunset and they have to jump out of the car and take a take a picture quick because uh it's gonna be gone that's what i want people to feel when they look at it and so the fact that you picked up on that is really cool because that's exactly what i was going for And I'm putting some, basically, a, an edge along in this yellow. Um, for the sun, where it starts to be apparent that there is a break between these two. Again, we're just creating illusion. We're just making up a story.
Oh, y'all, I am just so excited about how that's turning out. Now, what I need to do because I um, only painted one undercoat is I need to go into the shadows and establish these shadows again because they are, I can see my grid lines underneath. <laughs> so we don't want that when somebody gets close to a, uh... hey Joanna, thank you. So good to see you in passing today in town. I love to, I love that about our town. We can just periodically catch one another. Darkest spots should be up here, up close. I'll have to go up and We don't want any super distracting elements here in the foreground, but we do want the sense or the feeling of that it is closer. So we just keep Doing our layers. We'll break up some of these big blocks of color. Cooler than warmer. Cooler than warmer. I think we're getting there though. This is really nice, isn't it? I think that is about it, y'all. I am going to step back off 
my perch because I step back far enough got to put my glasses on because <laughs> don't need them for close-up but need them for distance so that looks really cool let me see if there's anything I want to add Maybe just, it's not really, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. The only thing I think I may do to emphasize, now that it's kind of drying, I want to take, I think, a little bit of the um raw sienna i wonder i never use the burnt sienna i wonder if it's too much might be too much it's really it's very red I want to go into the sky and I'd really love to give some more orange. I don't want to ruin my sunset though by doing too much. So just want to take a little bit. See if we can bring a little bit of that orange up into here. That might I kinda like it. So Again, we're just take that orange all the way up. We can give a little bit of this so that it's more, a little more colorful than the reference photo. There, now we have a little color, a little more interest.
years ago, I lived up the highway from um, Frank Lloyd Wright's home in Wisconsin. And he moved one of his hills because he insisted that God had made a mistake. He was a little arrogant, but not going to say God made a mistake, but I'm going to say as an artist, we can make some artistic choices. Maybe we can be more humble like Newton or like Einstein and say we're seeking to know the mind of God. And put a little bit of this color into the sunset. Just all right, I think that's it. We're just gonna let it be. Could keep messing around with this forever, but I think it's at the place it needs to be. And I have learned what it came to teach me. So, therefore, we shall call it a day. And we're four minutes from time. So I shall rearrange my camera to say a proper Goodbye. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of this. And I'll bring you back to here so that I can turn my camera around and say I'll look forward to seeing you next week. So grateful for those of you who took the time out of your start to your week to uh, spend these couple of hours with me. It is deeply appreciated. All right, so we're back here and I'll show you kind of out of the kind of under just normal light. You can see, I'll turn it that way a little bit so you can see kind of what we came up with not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. All right. I want to say thank you so much for joining me for this beautiful sunset painting. Um, it was a pleasure having you here. I'm so glad that you spent this time with me. I will see you next week, Monday night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time again. And if you would like to see the progress photos from this painting as well as the other paintings that I paint in my studio, you can follow me on Instagram at Stephen E. Rice, and you can see those there. So be sure to follow there. Until then, I will see you next week. Have a great week and a wonderful evening. Take care, everybody. Good night.